What is going on, beautiful people? This is Medicosis Perfectionitis, continuing my physiology plays. Today, we'll talk about the basics of electromyography. We will talk about muscle hypertrophy and what's going to happen to your muscle if the nerve is toast. Moreover, we'll mention rigor mortis quickly. Now, let's get started. This is my physiology playlist. Today's video is video number 57. Please watch them in order. Electromyography or EMG. Why do we have it? Well, to record the electrical activity of muscles and motor neurons not just muscles it's the muscle and the nerve that supplies the muscle how about electrocardiography well it's recording the electrical activity of the heart how about electroencephalography it's recording the electrical activity of the brain same concept what do we use cathode ray oscilloscope why not a stupid needle like this because the needle is made of metal metal is heavy it has a mass mass has inertia therefore it cannot measure the fine fluctuations that are in millivolts that's why you need a CRO. And then the electrode. Sometimes the electrode is outside on the skin. Sometimes it's a hypodermic needle inside the muscle. And sometimes it's both. During rest, your muscles show little activity, but it's not zero activity. There is some tone in your muscle even during rest. And then the doctor or the technician will ask you, Hey, patient, please contract your muscles. And then they contract and then contract more. What happens as you increase your muscle contraction? They will increase the frequency of nerve impulses to the motor unit and increase number of contracting motor units. The concept of the motor unit was discussed before. Let's review the motor unit real quick. What's the definition? Well, the motor neuron is the nerve and the muscle. Okay, it's the nerve fiber and all the muscle fibers supplied by that nerve fiber. Since your back muscles are gross, I mean, I don't mean disgusting, I mean like big crude movements that are not fine, then you can use one neuron for every 200 muscle fibers. However, in the eye, oh, they need very teeny tiny precise fine movements, so therefore, each nerve fiber supplies only about three muscle fibers. Here's a trick question. A patient with muscle weakness went to get an electromyography. In the beginning, with weak contractions, the wave's amplitude was low. But with repetitive, stronger contractions, the amplitude of the wave increased tremendously. What's the most likely diagnosis? And the answer is, this is Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. We will discuss that in detail in video number 59, and the title will be Clinically Oriented Physiology. Here is a nerve, here is a muscle. Can you tell me what's the purpose of the nerve? Oh, I know, medicosis. The nerve has only one function. It is to stimulate the muscle. Shut up. Even my grandma can say that. There is another purpose, doofus. What's that? The nerve also inhibits the muscle. How come? The nerve secretes acetylcholine to stimulate the muscle, correct? Yeah, I already know that. Moreover, the nerve will also destroy the acetylcholine, inhibiting the muscle contraction. Oh, that's impressive. Do you know what's going to happen if the nerve did not destroy the acetylcholine? What's going to happen? You will die. Die from what? From the same symptoms of organophosphate poisoning. And the acronym is DUMBLES. Diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, sweating, salivation. And this can kill you if you did not destroy your acetylcholine after contraction. So what happens if you lose that nerve? Oh, I know, medicosis. The muscle will not contract. That's true. More importantly, you can suffer from what? Loss of inhibition because the choline trace that was attached to the nerve is now gone. So you will get what? Fasciculations and fibrillations due to loss of inhibition. And that is huge. What's the difference between fasciculation and fibrillation? That's easy. You know, sometimes I feel like my eyelid is flickering, kind of making very, very teeny tiny movements that bother me. So I go to my doctor. Doctor, I think my eyelid is flickering. It's moving like crazy. If the doctor looked at them and they were visible to the doctor, so medicosis can feel them and the doctor can see them, these are fasciculations. But if medicosis can feel them, however, the doctor could not see them, this is fibrillation. Fasciculations are only seen in neurogenic disease when your nerve is toast. Fibrillations, however, could be a nerve problem or a muscle problem. But if I can't see muscle fibrillations with my naked eye, how would I trust that the patient is telling the truth? That's why you have an EMG, doofus. Here is the normal EMG. You ask the patient three things. Number one, just to relax. 
Number two, give me some weak contractions. And number three, give me robust, full contractions to the maximum of your capabilities. During rest, what should happen normally? Almost no activity. Notice, I did not say zero activity because there is normal muscle tone. Even when you are not contracting, your muscle uses some ATP to maintain the tone and to maintain the heat and to keep your optimum body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. What happens when the patient contracts muscles weakly? Recruitment of more motor neurons. Oh yeah, you're using more nerves and more muscle fibers. And it will give you waves like these, similar to the EKG or ECG. On the x-axis, you have time or duration. On the y-axis, you have the amplitude or the strength of the wave. Why do waves have different shapes? Because we are using different motor units. Not all of your neurons are the same and your muscle fibers are not created equal. What does the freaking amplitude represent? The number of muscle fibers within every single motor unit. The greater the number of muscle fibers, the greater the amplitude. On strong, robust, full contraction, you get overlap and interference. That's too many motor units contracting at the same time. It looks crazy. This was the normal EMG. Let's talk about diseases. The disease can hit your nerve or it can hit your muscle, right? Right. Neurogenic disease, the problem is in the nerve. Myopathy, your muscles are toast. What's gonna happen if my nerve is toast? Decreased number of motor units. What was the definition of the motor unit? It's one nerve fiber and the muscle fibers supplied by that nerve fiber. So if the nerve is gone, the motor units are gone. How about the motor units that are not gone, they will get bigger. You know what's gonna happen to medicosis? If medicosis removed one of his kidneys, the other kidney will get bigger. It's called compensatory hypertrophy. What's going to happen to your motor unit when you lose muscles? Okay, so in the good old days, I had one neurons supplying about three muscle fibers. Two of them are gone. Now I'm left with one neuron and one muscle fiber. So the size of the motor unit has decreased. And this is a huge difference. In neurogenic disease, the ones that survive get bigger in size, but in myopathy, they get smaller in size. Now, if this nerve is gone, neurogenic disease, do you know what's gonna happen? Other nerves from the surrounding motor units are gonna come and help this poor muscle. Isn't that awesome? When you lose a nerve, you lose the stimulation to the muscle. Moreover, you lose the inhibition to the muscle because the acetylcholine trace is gone and you will suffer from fasciculations and fibrillations, but in myopathies, only fibrillations. Let's say I have myasthenia gravis, which is a myopathy. Would I be able to see the fibrillation? The answer is no. You cannot see fibrillations by naked eye. You can only see them with electromyography. Here's the EMG pattern in neurogenic disease. Here's the EMG pattern in myopathy or myopathic disease. Let's go. Neurogenic disease during rest, spontaneous activity. You know why? Loss of inhibition. The acetylcholine trace is gone. So therefore, instead of having almost a flat line, you get some crazy activity. That's not normal. You should have no activity. With weak contraction, since we have decreased number of motor units, but the surviving ones are bigger due to compensatory hypertrophy, the amplitude is gonna be bigger. But in myopathy, the size of the motor unit is shrinking. So the amplitude is decreasing, the duration is decreasing. The x-axis and the y-axis are both suffering. With robust full contraction, decrease interference because there is less nerves, decrease amplitude, duration, and interference because there is less muscles. Here is normal EMG. Stage one during rest, weak contraction, strong contraction. If I have neurogenic disease, stage one, spontaneous activity. It's not a flat line like this. We have crazy activities due to loss of inhibition. In myopathy, it's normal, which means almost no activity. With weak contraction, normally is here. But if I have neurogenic disease, since there is compensatory hypertrophy, you'll have a bigger amplitude. Look at this y-axis, it is bigger. In myopathy, everything is suffering. The x-axis and the y-axis, they are getting narrower and shorter. With full contraction, decrease interference. Here, decrease amplitude, duration, and interference. This interference is not as big as the normal interference, which makes sense because you lost some muscles. Duh! Do you remember the types of cell growth? We have hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, dysplasia, and neoplasia. Let's talk about muscle hyperplasia. Some people ask me, hey, medicosis, does Joe Rogan have more muscles than you? Since he has, he like, he looks more muscular. Does that mean that he has more muscles than medicosis? The second question that I get is, does Joe Rogan have more muscle fibers than you? 
The answer to both questions is no. I have about the same number of muscles as Joe Rogan, which is about 640 muscles in the human body. We're talking about skeletal muscles, of course. And each of my muscles has the same amount of muscle fibers as Joe. What Joe has more than me is thicker muscle fibers. So same number, but the size is bigger. They are thicker. He has more myofibrils, not myofibers. Myofibers are the same. He has more myofibrils. Do you remember the hierarchy of muscles? Yeah, each muscle has many muscle fibers. Each fiber has many myofibrils. And each myofibril has many myofilaments, such as actin and myosin. Joe has more ATP. No kidding. Joe has more creatinine phosphate because his muscle fibers are thicker and creatinine phosphate is stored in the muscle, so it makes sense. Also, he has more muscle glycogen because he has thicker muscle fibers. This is the Joe Rogan experience. What happens to skeletal muscles if you cut the nerve? We are talking here about low motor neural lesion, not to be confused with upper motor neural lesion. If you cut the musculocutaneous nerve that supplies the biceps, the biceps will get weaker, no kidding. Eventually it will get paralytic, and then muscle becomes flaccid. If you touch my biceps, it's very soft and hypotonic. The reflexes are diminished. Muscle atrophy can happen, we call this denervation atrophy. Muscle fasciculations visible by the naked eye and muscle fibrillations invisible by the naked eye only detectable using emg both of them can happen when you cut the nerve neurogenic only fibrillations happen if there is a problem in the actual muscle this is when the cell is growing but what if the cell is not growing you mean atrophy yeah we have two types physiological atrophy and pathological atrophy physiological example after menopause there is ovarian atrophy that's normal that's expected Pathological, however, generalized all over your body when your entire body is deteriorating. This is cancer or starvation or anorexia, which is starvation. Or it could be localized, such as disuse atrophy. If I use my right arm, but I'm not using my left arm because it's in a cast or something. Oh, my left arm is going to atrophy. There is pressure atrophy. Let's say that I have some kind of mass that is growing, 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 and growing. It's going to occlude its own blood supply, causing pressure atrophy. There is vascular atrophy. When the blood vessel is gone, the organ is gone. There is neuropathic atrophy. When the nerve is gone, the muscle is gone. If my radial nerve suffers, the triceps is toast. There is hormonal atrophy. Example, after bilateral oophorectomy, which is surgical removal of both ovaries, the breast is going to atrophy because of lack of estrogen and progesterone. Rigor mortis, what's that? Rigor means rigorous contraction, extreme muscle rigidity in the corpse. Happens about four hours after death. And this helps the forensic pathologist estimate the time of death. Why does rigor mortis happen? Due to lack of ATP. Do you remember the story of that generation of tension between actin and myosin? It was binding, bending, detachment, return. You need ATP to bend the actin towards the midline, which makes sense. You also need ATP to detach the myosin from the actin. After death, there is no ATP. Myosin cannot detach from actin. That's why you're getting rigid. Let's review Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome from Picmonic. Lambert-Eaton, here is the lamb. Eaton. What's the problem? You see that? That's the presynaptic neuron. Okay. You have antibodies, anti-body, against the calcium channels in the presynaptic neuron. Calcium, cow. This will lead to decreased release of acetylcholine, acetylcholine. Lambert-Eaton is a paraneoplastic syndrome, a parachute, and cancer. Especially small cell lung cancer. Here is the lung cancer, and it's also known as oat cell carcinoma. Lambert-Eaton has proximal muscle weakness, so your upper arms and your thighs. Not distal muscles, we're talking proximal here. The extraocular muscles are usually intact. With repetitive contraction, lambert etomycinic syndrome improves. So the patient is miserable in the morning. But as the day progresses, as you contract and use your muscles more, they get better. That is lambert etomycinic syndrome. If you like this video, you will love my Uticoids Pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a CNS Pharmacology course on the same website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses, go to Picmonic for some doozy medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.